Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Boost Up English on the Learning English with Podcast channel. I'm Andrew, and today we're diving into a really interesting topic, how to start thinking in English. And to help me with this discussion, I've got Emma here with me. Hi, Emma. Hey, Andrew. I'm super excited about today's topic because thinking in English is such a key step for language learners. It can be a bit challenging at first, but it's totally doable with the right mindset. Absolutely. I think a lot of people struggle with translating from their native language to English when they first start learning, right? Exactly. It slows them down, and sometimes the translation isn't accurate, which leads to confusion. But when you start thinking directly in English, things become a lot smoother. It's all about training your brain. So, Emma, let's get into it. What's the first tip you would give to someone who wants to start thinking in English? Well, I'd say start with simple things, like labeling everyday objects around you in English. For example, when you see a table, instead of thinking of the word in your native language and then translating, just say table in your mind. That's a great tip. It's like creating a direct link between the object and the English word, right? Exactly. And it's not just objects. You can do this with your daily routines, too. For example, when you're making coffee, think through the steps in English. I'm boiling water, I'm adding sugar, and so on. It's about immersing your mind in the language. Yeah, I love that. So step one, start labeling and thinking about your surroundings in English. What's another practical strategy? Another one I recommend is having conversations with yourself in English. I know it sounds a bit funny, but just talking to yourself in simple English sentences can really help your brain switch to thinking in the language. I do that too sometimes. It's like practicing without the pressure of talking to someone else. You can say whatever comes to mind, and it's a judgment-free zone. Exactly. Plus, it helps you get comfortable forming sentences and thinking quickly in English, which is key. Start with easy things like asking yourself, what do I need to do today, and answering in English. That's awesome. And speaking of practice, what about people who might not have a lot of time? Do you think they can still benefit from small moments throughout the day? Absolutely. I think even if you only have a few minutes here and there, you can use them to practice. For example, when you're waiting for the bus or standing in line, you can think about what you're going to do next, but do it in English or look around and describe the scene around you in English. That's such a practical tip. It's like using all those small gaps during the day as opportunities to practice. Exactly. And if you want to take it a step further, start thinking in English about more complex things, like how you're feeling. Instead of just saying, I'm tired, you could think, I've had a long day, and now I feel exhausted because of all the work I've done. The idea is to push yourself gradually to think in more detailed sentences. That's a good point. Building up from simple thoughts to more complex ones. It's all about consistency. I also heard that reading and watching content in English can help train your brain to think in the language. What's your take on that? Oh, definitely. When you're reading or watching something in English, try to focus on understanding it without translating in your head. You can pause and reflect on what you've just read or watched and summarize it mentally in English. I love that. It's like passive immersion, letting your brain get used to processing English naturally. And speaking of content, I think it's helpful to choose material you actually enjoy, right? Yes, that's crucial. If you're watching a show or reading a book that you really like, you'll be more engaged and it'll feel less like studying. You can even start thinking about the characters and plot in English. Great point. Another thing I've found helpful is using English in my hobbies. For instance, if you love cooking, you could follow recipes in English and think through the steps as you're cooking. Oh, that's a fantastic idea. Whatever you enjoy, whether it's playing video games, gardening, or even exercising, you can find ways to involve English. For example, when you're running, you can think about how your body feels, like I'm picking up my pace, or I need to drink water after this lap. Yeah, it's all about surrounding yourself with the language in everyday activities. Do you think using tools like language apps or flashcards also helps in starting to think in English? Absolutely. 
apps like Duolingo or Anki can be helpful, especially for vocabulary building, but the key is to actively use the words and phrases you learn in real-life situations. Don't just memorize them. Make an effort to use them in your thoughts. I agree. Memorizing without applying what you learn can only take you so far. Another thing I found helpful is practicing with native speakers or language partners. It forces you to think on your feet in English. Yes, conversing with native speakers is one of the best ways to make your brain think in English. You don't have time to translate, so you just react, which is perfect for building that English thinking habit. Totally. So, to recap for our listeners, we talked about labeling your surroundings, talking to yourself in English, using small moments throughout the day to think in English, reading and watching content without translating, engaging in hobbies in English, and speaking with native speakers or language partners. These are all great ways to start thinking in English. Yep, and remember, it's a gradual process. It won't happen overnight, but if you keep at it, you'll start noticing that your brain begins to think in English more naturally over time. Exactly. Thanks so much for joining me today, Emma. This was such a helpful conversation. Thanks for having me, Andrew. I hope our listeners find these tips useful and start incorporating them into their daily lives. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Keep practicing, and soon you'll be thinking in English like a pro. Don't forget to check the free PDF in the description for more useful vocabulary. Goodbye, and we'll see you in the next episode. Let's look at some words related to today's topic. Translate, definition, to change words from one language into another. Example, many learners first translate sentences from their native language into English, which can slow them down. Immersion, definition, the process of surrounding yourself completely with something, in this case, English, to learn it better. Example, living in an English-speaking country provides great language immersion. Label, definition, to name or describe something, especially using words. Example, try labeling objects in your home in English to help you think in the language. Routine, definition, a regular way of doing things in a particular order. Example, you can describe your daily routine in English to practice thinking in the language. Fluency, definition, the ability to speak or write a language smoothly and easily. Example, thinking in English is a key step to achieving fluency. Passive learning. Definition, learning that happens indirectly, often without realizing it, such as watching TV or listening to music in another language. Example, watching movies in English without subtitles is a great way to engage in passive learning. Vocabulary. Definition, the set of words known and used by a person. Example, expanding your vocabulary will help you think in English more naturally. Self-talk. Definition. The act of talking to yourself, often silently, to practice a language. Example, self-talk is a great way to start thinking in English without feeling shy. Mental processing. Definition, the way your brain processes or thinks about information. Example, when you begin to think in English, your mental processing in the language becomes faster. Internal monologue. Definition, the conversation you have with yourself in your head. Example. Try having your internal monologue in English to build fluency. Post-listening questions. What are some of the benefits of being able to think in English? Should you force yourself to think in English all the time, or is it okay to use your native language sometimes? Do you think some people are naturally better at thinking in a second language than others? Why or why not? Thank you.